Hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Phil Earl. I write stories for children and for teenagers. Uh, as you might know some of my books, I wrote, I wrote When the Sky Falls. And I also wrote uh, While the Storm Rages. And I also wrote uh, this new one, which is called Until the Road Ends. And you can probably see from the three covers that they do have something in common. They're kind of a collection of stories about animals during the Blitz in World War II. Yeah, Until the Road Ends is a slightly different story. But instead of telling you what it's about, I thought I might just read you uh, a little bit of the opening chapter to give you a flavour of what it might be about. So I won't say anything more except read you this. It would be fair to say that Bo's life began one second before it almost ended. He hadn't meant to stagger in the into the road, but he was hungry, starving in fact. The dustbins that lined Balham's alleyways had been mercilessly empty all week, leaving him light-headed and woozy. This was why he tottered from the curb onto the busy high street and why he found himself staring at the approaching lorry. He should have moved. He knew that. He'd survived on the streets for years, so was adept at darting suddenly from danger. But this time, he didn't or couldn't. The monster's lights blinded him, holding him trance-like. It blared a warning, a long, tuneless growl, but this paralysed him. He didn't want it to end like this. He wasn't old or bitter. He didn't hate the world or the people who lived in it, but he was tired and his legs simply didn't understand the gravity of the situation. So he continued to sit. But as he shut out the world one final time, he felt it shift and then capsize as two hands gripped his belly, wrenching him sideways. Bo rolled, pulled tight into his saviour and saw the landscape pirouette as they both dived for safety of the gutter while the lorry tore by. What had just happened, he wondered. And whose hands were they, gripping him tightly still? The dog tensed, trying to see who was holding him, but was clutched so closely to their chest that he could see nothing at all. He panicked. He didn't trust humans. He wanted to, but after all that had happened to him, he couldn't take the risk. His entire body went rigid, but those hands held on. He booked and writhed, expecting the human to become angry like they always had in the past. He waited for hands to strike him or the voice to shout, but neither came. Instead, his head was pulled into the nape of the human's neck and a single finger gently scratched at a spot that had been troubling him for days. If that wasn't enough to allow his tension to subside, there came a voice. Not of a grown human, who were always the worst in his experience, but of a child. Steady on! said the girl. It's nothing to be scared of, is that I got you beautiful? Just in time, too, by the looks of it. Bo's legs stopped resisting altogether as the single finger became two, three, then four. The voice continued singing softly in his ear. It's all right, beautiful. It's all right. And it was such a simple, heartfelt lullaby that the dog relented, all fear and distrust forgotten. Within seconds... He was sound asleep. So here's a thought for you. You've just heard the opening chapter. Here's a little writing exercise to show you just how simple it is to get a story going. Think about the following questions. Who is the dog? What is his name? How old are they? If they've been living rough, where have they been sleeping? How long have they been there? And why are they living on the road, on the streets? And lastly, think about what happens next. Who might that girl be who has saved him? And what might her story be? When Bo wakes up next, where will he wake up? What will his surroundings be like? If you can answer those questions, then you can tell the story itself. Give it a try. I promise you it is not as difficult as you might think. I really hope you enjoy reading until the road ends. Cheers. Bye.